if we look at how rapidly um, the unit tangent is changing, not as a function of time, but as a function of distance traveled, then the magnitude of this change is a good measure of the curvature or the bendiness of the curve. Because for a given change in distance along the curve, if we have a large change in the unit tangent, that means we're turning a lot. That would mean the curvature is high. It's very curvy. On the other hand, if for um, a, dis a change, a given distance along the curve, if we don't change the direction of the tangent very much, that must mean that the curve is not bending very much, so the curvature would be low. So we call this measure um, kappa, so the Greek letter K, um, K as in curvature. Okay, so we want to we want to measure this this curvature. Now we have seen that um, given a parameterization, you can figure out what the arc length parameter is, right? Then you can solve for t as a function of s and go back into your parameterization to get r as a function of s. Then, once you have r as a function of s, you could find dt ds because you could find t, right? You could write t as a function of s. That would just be dr ds over the, the speed, which would be the length of r prime of s, but we said that's always going to be equal 1. So you could just find r prime of s, that would give you um, t of s, and then you could take the second derivative of that, or you could take the derivative of that, right, dt ds, so that would be r double prime, the second derivative of r with respect to s, and then just find the magnitude of that. The hard part was right here, this is, this is pretty hard. And of course, this is a pretty long chain, too. So we've got many, many steps that we need to accomplish to get r in terms of s so that we can get the unit tangent in terms of s so that we can get um, the, abs the uh, magnitude of the unit tangent. So this would be the long way to do it. However, we could, <coughs> we could notice maybe a little bit of a shortcut. So we know that we can get s as a function of time. So we can get, to, sorry, the unit tangent as a function of s. And we know that we can get s as a function of t. So that means we have a chain here, right? And according to the chain rule, if I wanted to find how does the unit tangent depend on time, then I would find how does the unit tangent depend on arc length, and how does the arc length depend on time. Now this, this is how far you've traveled for how much time. So this is basically just the speed. And so that guy, that's the speed. We'll use that quite a bit, that ds dt is actually equal to the length of the velocity vector, right? Or the magnitude of the derivative of position with respect to time. So ds dt is that. In fact, you can see it from the definition of s. So s is the integral from some starting time up to t of speed as a function of tau, d tau. And you remember from the fundamental theorem that if you take the derivative of both sides with respect to t, the derivative with respect to t of a function where the, where the, um, the variable is in the, is in the upper bound of this integral, then the variable just comes down and lands here, and we get, okay, so it's really just a consequence of the fundamental theorem that the SDT is e equal to the speed. We'll use that quite a bit. If we want to find the SDT, it's easy, it's just the speed. So that means, if we want to find DT DS, this is the scalar, we can divide both sides here, and we'll have DT DT divided by the speed, right? So divided by ds dt. This may offer us a faster way to do it because we'll never actually have to find, in order to find dt ds, we'll never actually have to find um, s, right? Because in order to find, we can, we can start off with r, and given r, we can find t, and given t, we can find dt dt. Also, given r, we can find the velocity. And given the velocity, we can find the speed. 
and the speed is ds dt. So we could find these two things and then divide them and that will give us dt ds. The last step will be to take the magnitude. So if we want the curvature kappa, we'll take the magnitude of dt ds, right? which would just be the magnitude of ddt all over um, the sdt is the speed. So um, this is just going to be the magnitude of the velocity. All right, so this gives us a pretty shortcut formula for determining the curvature kappa. So this would, to calculate dt ds directly, would involve a lot of steps. But that tells us what we're talking about, right? So we, we can see from here what, what kappa means. It means how fast or what is the magnitude of the change in the unit tangent for a given distance along the curve. So if kappa is high, it means that the, the change in the unit tangent is large. So the, cu the curve is curving a lot. So this gives us a sense of what kappa is, but this gives us perhaps a more direct route for calculating kappa. Let's do an example here. So we know that we want to find kappa for this curve. And we know that kappa is equal to the magnitude of dt dt all over the speed. So in this case, first we need to find um, t, right? So t is the velocity, the unit tangent is the velocity divided by the speed. Okay, and um, the velocity in this case, the derivative cosine is negative sine, so we have negative a sine t. The derivative of sine is the cosine, so we have a cos and t, and the derivative of zero is zero, all over the speed, which in this case would be a squared, the square root of a squared sine squared t plus a squared cosine squared t. And that would just be a squared, and if we assume that a is a positive number, well, anyway, we could just get the, let's assume that a is positive, so that that's just um, the square root of a squared is just a, then we get minus sine t and cos t. Okay, so there's t. Now, in order to get kappa, I have to find the derivative of the unit tangent with respect to time, which, if I take the derivative of this, is going to be the derivative of sine is cosine, so we get minus cos t and minus sine t. And the length of that derivative the length of the unit tangent d time is the square root of cosine squared plus sine squared. Okay, and uh, that's one. Because cosine squared plus sine squared is one and the square root of one is one. All right, so now I think we can get kappa. We already figured out that the speed here was equal to a, right? So kappa is equal to 1 over a. Now this is kind of interesting because if you look at the curve we have here, this is actually just a parameterization of a circle in the xy plane because z is set equal to 0 and x squared plus y squared is a squared. So this is a circle of radius a and notice that kappa is equal to 1 over the radius. This is, this is true for a circle and so by analogy when we calculate kappa for any curve, we will say that the value of kappa is 1 over the radius of curvature. So really what we're saying is if we have some curve, then that curve could have, could be approximated by a circle that just touches the curve, right? So there's a circle with that same curvature that just touches the curve. Now it actually just kisses the curve and um, in Latin the word to kiss is to osculate and so this is called the osculating circle. It's the circle with the same curvature that would just fit right in that curve. Now if that, cir if that uh, circle has a radius rho, right, then the curvature of that circle would be 1 over rho. But then this circle has the same curvature as the curve, so we'll just say, all right, rho is the radius of curvature of this curve because it's the radius curvature of the circle that just kisses the curve at that point. 
So rho then is going to be 1 over kappa. So 1 over kappa is, is also the radius of curvature. This is used a lot, especially in civil engineering when you're laying out curves. You get the radius of curvature. You could use, you, you could, it would be handy to have that row in order to, to, um, in order to build the curve. So anyway, we can use our formula to find kappa. Um, since for a circle, kappa is 1 over the radius of the circle, in general, we'll say kappa is 1 over the radius of curvature of that curve, in the sense that if we had, um, if we had a if we had a circle with that with that radius of curvature, it would match up perfectly with that curve. So if we had so the radius of curvature is actually the radius of the osculating circle.